Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to learn how to make this beautiful uh, granny stitch t-shirt. So it comes from the hexagon shape and we already, we're already familiar with this shape. If you haven't yet tried out the hexagon uh, shrug or front tie sleeves, I already have a tutorial for them on my channel and you should give them a try because it's something quite similar, but not the same exact um we also have a tutorial for the ruffle shorts that are paired up with the top in this photo so we have the tutorials for all for the whole set literally so you should try out that set in this image after this tutorial so today we're going to learn how to make this shirt it can be used as a cover-up for the beach or for your other outfits especially when worked in lightweight cotton yarn so that it's not so warm so for the demonstration i am using acrylic yarn because that's what i have in plenty and it's readily available to me and for the yarn i'm using uh winter king it's a four ply dk weight yarn so this i used about eight balls and each ball is 150 yards so eight of these were enough for me to make the full shirt um the size that i'll be making is small to medium but definitely if you're like a larger size then you'll need more balls maybe 10 to 12. then um you'll also need a pair of scissors a darning needle a five millimeter crochet hook and a measuring tape this is a must because you're going to take a few measurements First of all, we are going to take the measurement of the sleeve that we desire. So uh, one thing that you have to consider is the sleeve shouldn't be tight, like it shouldn't be the exact circumference of your sleeve. Usually I do 12 inches and that will be definitely enough, 12 to 13, and this will be enough for my um the widest part of my sleeve but i want buggy sleeves so i'll go for a bigger size around 16 so that it's loosely fitted around my sleeve and then um the other thing that you're going to measure is the length of the shirt that you need you're going to measure all the way from the top of your shoulder and note down the length of the shirt that you want mine was between 19 and 20 inches the length of the shirt then you also measure your full bust measurement because you will need it and we shall give some sort of posit positive ease to the shirt so that it's not tightly fitted so let's begin so you're going to grab your hook and your yarn and we're going to start off with a magic ring and for a magic ring you're going to hold your yarn like this put the tail here the working yarn behind the two fingers and hold rotate your yarn around your two fingers like this so this is the working yarn the one that's connected to the yarn ball and then this is the end of the yarn so you're going to get your hook and pass it through this and grab the working yarn like this and then hold for those people who don't know how to make a magic ring this is your chance to learn so once you hold you're going to make a chain of one and that won't count as anything so you can see this is our magic ring this one here so you're going to make a chain of three which counts as our very first double crochet and you're going to go into the, the magic ring with two more double crochets one and two just like this so we have a total of three double crochets and then from here you're going to make a chain of two and then into the magic ring you're going to place three double crochets for a double crochet you're going to yarn over insert your hook into the magic ring pull up a loop yarn over pull through two and yarn over pull through two that's a double crochet in the u.s terms so repeat that two more times insert your hook pull up a loop yarn over pull through two yarn over pull through two and one more time So, so far we have two groups of three double crochets, as you can see, and they're separated by a chain two space. So continue to chain two, and then into the magic ring, 
you're going to place three double crochets one two and three if you feel like the magic ring is too loose and it is obstructing your the way you work you're going to just pull on this tail just like this to close it up a little bit not completely because we are still working into the magic ring and then you're going to make a chain of two and then into the magic ring you're going to place a total of three double crochets so we're going to repeat that until we have a total of six groups of three double crochets so far we have one two three four chain two three double crochets and this will be our fifth group and then you're going to make a chain of two and this is the sixth group which should be the final group of three double crochets for this round and this is round one so this is what you should have cross check one two three four five and six groups of three double crochets separated by chain two spaces and then you're going to make a chain two to separate the very first group from the very last group and then you're going to slip stitch on into the top chain of the first chain three so you're going to insert your hook into the top chain of the chain three pull through all and that's a slip stitch so so far we are done with round one and you're going to get the tail of the magic ring and pull on it this will close up the magic ring if it's not totally closed up don't fight with it because you may pop the the tail uh you may break the tail and then uh you will have to repeat the whole process so just leave it at this and we shall weave it in later on with a dunning needle so this is what you should have now we are going on to round two and you're going to make a chain of three which counts as a double crochet turn your work into the very first chain two space which is this one attached to the chain three you're going to place two more double crochets to make a total of three double crochets since the chain three counted as a double crochet so three double crochets chain two and three more double crochets into the same exact chain two space just like this so that will count as a shell for this pattern a shell is three double crochets chain two and three more double crochets so after this you're going to make a chain of one and then into the chain two space you're going to place a shell and I've told you for this pattern a shell is three double crochets chain two and three more double crochets into the same exact chain two space so this is what you'll have so you're going to repeat this all the way around chain one a shell into the next chain two space that is three double crochets chain two and three more double crochets chain one shell into the next chain two space just like that chain one shell into the next chain two space chain one and we have only one chain two space left which is here and you're going to place a shell so three double crochets chain two and three more double crochets into the same exact chain two space so once you get done with this you're going to make a chain of one and slip stitch into the top chain of the first chain three of the round so into the top of the chain three at the beginning of the round 
and slip stitch so it just pull through all so this is what our round two looks like and you should be seeing a shape of a hexagon you should be having six sides at this point we have this side two three four five and six if you don't have six sides that's that means there was a problem somewhere and you need to cross check from the beginning so from here we are going on to round three and round three you're going to make a chain of three turn your work and into the chain one space this is a chain one space remember the chain two spaces are only located in the corners of the hexagon and the chain one spaces are on the sides of the hexagon so if it's a chain one space it only gets three double crochets but since we already have the chain three that counts as a double crochet we only place two more double crochets to make a total of three in this space and then you're going to make a chain of one the chain two space or is gets a shell so remember a shell is three double crochets chain two and three more double crochets into the same space just like that and then you're going to make a chain of one this is a chain one space so it will get only three double crochets chain one this is a shell so each shell gets a shell and where we place the shell is into the chain two space of the previous shell i hope uh, my instructions are clear if you're getting value from this video so far make sure i give it a thumbs up and also share it with your crochet community and friends and leave a comment down below i'd like to know what you think about this tutorial so after this you're going to make a chain of one into the chain one space you're going to place three double crochets chain one into the chain two space which is a shell you're going to place a shell sorry for the noise okay so after the shell you're going to chain one and then three double crochets into the next chain one space chain one um a shell into the next chain two space so by now you should notice that whether we place a shell or three double crochets the next thing is to make a chain of one from now onwards so imagine if you place your shell into this shell or into the chain two space which will create a corner here you're going to make a chain of one it's a must whether you place a shell or three double crochets as we are doing here because these are three double crochets into the chain one space and we are still making a chain of one after so don't forget to always make your chain of one every after a shell or after the three double crochets so we are creating our next corner which is a shell into the next shell chain one three double crochets into the next chain one space chain one and then a shell into the next shell all right so once you get here you're going to make a chain of one don't forget and then you're going to slip stitch into the first the top of the first chain three of the round into the topmost chain of the chain three at the beginning of the round and this is what you'll have so we're just going to repeat round three again and again and again and you can see our hexagon is growing you should maintain the number of corners that you have for your hexagon they should always be six the other ones are always sides so as you can see we have two sides here two sides here and two sides which makes a perfect hexagon so from here let me just demonstrate something small for round four you're going to make a chain of three turn your work two more double crochets into the very first 
chain one space because the chain three counts as a double crochet chain one and then this is a corner and it will receive a shell and the shell is three double crochets chain two and three more double crochets and then you're going to make a chain of one into the chain one space you're going to place three double crochets chain one into the chain one space you're going to place three double crochets chain one and into the chain two space or the corner or the shell you're going to place a shell so your rounds are going to start getting longer and longer and your hexagon is going to build up and become bigger and bigger as you go along repeating that round and the sides will definitely get longer as you can see now we have two groups of three double crochets in between the shells before we had only one group of three double crochets in between the shells for round three and for round two we literally didn't have any group of three double crochets in between the two shells so it will keep growing because we are expanding the hexagon so keep working around and around and around and don't forget to always work in the opposite direction of the previous round and i'll meet you back to show you how many rounds that i did and what i considered to stop building the hexagon all right guys so i went ahead to do a total of one two three four five six seven eight nine ten 11 12 13 14 and 15 rounds for the hexagon and this is exactly what i have i have a very huge hexagon so if i don't fold it we won't be seeing the whole piece on the screen but once we fold it just get one side like this let me say this one just get one side and fold it over like this and get the this side cross it over to the opposite side and you'll have something that looks like this so this length here this is exactly what we have and you can see one side of the shirt is already showing so we're going to get a measuring tape so my sleeves from the exact middle of the magic ring all the way outwards is about nine inches which i want for my sleeve this is the length of the sleeve that i want we shall put the edging later on and then the length of the top as a whole all the way from here all the way down is about 16 inches and i'm not stretching out anything because i want a loosely fitted top which is not body hugging or stretched on the body then uh, here we have 16 inches here we have nine inches and for the length of the sleeve, I'm done with this part. I'm not going to increase the length of the sleeve uh, unless if I am working the borderline. Then for the length of the top or the shirt, I still have some more work to do because I want it to be about 20 inches so that it's not so short. I want a length of 20 inches or 21 around here this is the length that i want that means we are still growing this bottom side of the shirt and then for the length across here is about eight inches and that means um for my bust i am considering 36 inches so i'm going to give it an a positive ease of about four inches so that it goes to 40 inches so i'm saying four inches and i'm adding that four to 36 inches which is the full bust measurement that i'm considering for this uh piece and i'm adding the four inches to the 30 to the 36 which will give me 40 inches so since these are two layers and this is half of the piece we should be working until we have a total of 10 inches on this measurement because 10 inches will mean we shall have 20 inches on this side and 20 inches for the second piece which which will definitely be a mirror of what we have on this piece so 
so if we get 10 inches here that will give us a total of 20 inches multiplied by two because we have two layers yeah i hope i'm making sense there now that means um if we are done with the length of the sleeve and this is the thickness of my sleeve this is what i've decided to go for if you want your sleeve to be wider than this you can go ahead and work some more rounds in order for you to get the thickness of the sleeve that you want but for me that is a total of around eight to nine inches it should be the same exact length that we have here so eight inches so that would be the thickness of the sleeve eight times two 16 inches because we are considering two panels so this is what we have right now eight times two 16 which is the circumference of our sleeve so what are we supposed to do in order to grow this length to 10 inches and also this length from 16 to 20 inches which is the planned uh, length of the shirt or 21 inches so that means we are going to eliminate this side we eliminate this side because we are not going to grow upwards we are going to grow downwards so we eliminate these two sides this one and this one and we also eliminate this side so we are going to work with three sides this side the base and then this side so i hope i'm making sense at this point we are working all the way from here from this corner down to the base across and then up so this will be the front panel this one and then this will be the back panel and then this will be the bottom part of one side of the t-shirt so let's go ahead and do that so once you finish your very last stitch of your last round you're going to chain one and then slip stitch into the very first stitch of the round and then you're going to chain one and cut your yarn so put your work back the same exact way like how it was when i was explaining just to give you a visual of exactly what's happening so we are going to attach our yarn in this corner here this corner of either the front or the back panel because this piece is exactly the same so this you're going to attach your yarn and don't forget um we are aiming for we have eight inches right now make sure your work is balanced we have eight inches and we want to add two inches outwards so you're going to attach your yarn in this corner just grab your yarn attach and make sure you're working in the opposite direction of the previous round so attach here and then you're going to make a chain of three which counts as our very first double crochet and into the same space you're going to place two more double crochets so that will make a total of three double crochets and you're going to go all the way down chain one three double crochets into the next chain one space chain one So I'm going to go all the way down. When it comes to the corners, you know exactly what to do. So we're going to go all the way down here, down at the base, and all the way up here. And I'll meet you back at that point. Okay, so I'm coming to the end of my row and after my chain one, into this corner, you're going to only place three double crochets. And that will match exactly what we did on the opposite side, which is here. We placed a total of three double crochets into the corner after attaching. So you should be seeing the same exact thing happening here. 
so let's see what else uh, I needed to explain right now what we are doing is increasing the sides of the t-shirt as you can see here we've moved from eight to almost nine inches and then uh, we are also increasing the length of the shirt it has come from 17 from 16 to 17 almost so we're going to just keep working around these three sides increasing the length of the t-shirt and the width of the body of the t-shirt without tampering with the sleeve length and width so after here you're going to make a chain of four which counts as a double crochet chain one turn your work and then you're going to go into the chain one space with three double crochets and then from here everything else just remains the same maintain the corners and keep building uh, the three sides of your t-shirt tell I'll meet you back at the end of this row because I need to show you how it ends and then I also show you how um, to start the next row Alright guys, so we are almost getting done with the second row of the front and back extension as well as the bottom extension of the t-shirt. So you're going to chain one after placing your three double crochets in the last chain one space and you're going to yarn over, prepare for a double crochet and place a double crochet into the topmost chain of the edge, chain three of the previous row just like that so you should be having the same exact thing happening on this end because we started with a chain of four which counted as a double crochet chain one so if we put it like this your length of the shirt should be widening let's see what we have now we're still at nine point something so as you can see nine so we are still working until we get to around 10 inches or 11 inches depending on the width that you want for your t-shirt so just repeat the two rows and then for the length remember we had to do uh, way more rows to get to a total of 21 inches or 20 inches from 16. so so far we have a total of 17 inches so we are not worried about this length yet so we are going to concentrate here until we get the length then we shall come back and see what we shall have here and see how much more to extend downwards because the distance here that we have left to get to 20 is way more than the distance that we have here to get to around 10 to 11 inches so let's first focus on the front and back panel the width of the t-shirt So we're just going to continue. Uh, row three is going to start with a chain of three. Turn your work. And then into the chain one space, this very first one, you're going to place two more double crochets there. To make a total of three double crochets, since the chain three at the beginning of the row counts as a double crochet, then you're just going to repeat the same exact pattern all the way across until the end of the row. So row three should literally look like row one, as you can see here. We start with three double crochets and also row three, the same thing. So we're going to just repeat rows two and three, two and three, keep alternating the two rows until you have the thickness of the t-shirt that you want here. Then I'll meet you back when I have the thickness that I want for my All right guys, so we are through and I did a total of one, two, three, four, five. Five rows of extension uh, on both the front and the back panel as we had discussed earlier on. And when I measure this, when I take this measurement, it's about 10.5 inches without stretching, which should be perfectly fine for us. So once you get done with this part, 
Um, okay, we're going to take the length of, of the shirt and this is giving us 19 inches. I think at this point, I'm very comfortable with this length. If you're not, then you are going to attach your yarn here and make some extensions only on one side, which is supposed to be the bottom side of the shirt. So you just attach your yarn here, just like we did for these three sides. You attach your yarn and place two double crochets into the same space and go all the way across with the same exact granny stitch pattern. And when it comes to the end, you place three double crochets here and then chain four to bring up your yarn, turn your work and then come back. Keep working back and forth in order to get the length that you want for your shirt. But for me, I think this is perfectly fine uh, considering I wanted 20 inches, so 19 could be perfectly fine. And also, I don't know if I'm going to make a, an edging yet, but if I do, then that will uh, compensate for the lost inch that we haven't put on this length. So the other thing that you're going to do is to repeat the same exact process. So after your very last stitch here, you're going to make a chain of one and cut your yarn and leave this panel like this because we shall need it. We shall come back to it to assemble each and everything together. So this is the sleeve, this is the body of the shirt, and then this is the front panel, this is supposed to be the back panel. And we are going to repeat the same exact process that we have here onto our second panel and then we shall assemble each and everything together at the end so grab your yarn and rewind this video in total i've used about four sorry three and a half balls to do the whole of this so i just have to have about four balls to do the second panel just to be on a safe side but yeah now i have a rough estimate of how much yarn that i need to make the two panels before I attach any edging or anything else. So rewind this video and do the same exact thing for your second panel and I'll meet you back at that point when you're done with that. All right guys, so we went ahead to recreate the same exact panel and now you should be having two panels that look exactly alike. And now we are going to create some more back coverage for the middle section of the two panels. So uh, when you get done with this side, we are now going to separate the back panel from the front panel by, by doing uh, one more row on one side, which is this one. So this should be your back panel. So you're going to just go ahead and make a chain of four, turn your work, then place three double crochets into the next chain one space and continue with the pattern chain one three double crochets chain one three double crochets and repeat this all the way across until the end which is this corner. So when you get to this corner, I'll show you exactly how to wind up your row. All right, so we've come to the end of the row and I've chained one and into the corner, I'm going to place only three double crochets this time because you're only working one side. So once you do that, you're going to chain one and cut your yarn. So this is the extra row on the back panel. You can go ahead and mark it with a stitch marker on both ends so that you don't confuse it with any other side so the row that has stitch markers on both ends is that extra row on the back side so oh. when you fold over your work like this you'll see that the back panel is a little bit longer than the front panel as you can see here so this is the extra row so we are going to do the same thing on this the very first panel that we did so place your work like this 
so that this is uh, one of the sides this is the left side or the right side and then this is the second side so you're going to determine where to elongate to do the extra row of the back panel so in my case i will do the back panel along this line so get your hook and yarn and repeat the same exact process but this time we are going to be joining while working that row so for those who don't know the join as you go method you can just make the row as usual and then use your darning needle to join the two pieces together so i'm going to attach my yarn in this corner chain three and then place two more double crochets into the same space and then chain one and attach into this space we shall use this chain to join onto this side so for now don't worry about this space not being joined so you're going to go into the next chain one space and pull through and then double crochet three times into the next chain one space and you're going to repeat this all the way up chain one go into the next chain one space on the opposite panel join and then three double crochets into the next chain one space okay so this is what we have we are going to go all the way up joining the two panels together on the back panel all right so we are coming to the end of the row and this is how the joining looks like that's the line and when you place the last three double crochets in the last chain one space you're going to chain one attach onto this chain for space on the opposite side and then double crochet into the very last stitch of the opposite panel to join the two pieces together and then you're going to chain one and cut your yarn and this is what you'll have so that means uh the back panel is finished the joining of the back panel is done and this is what the front panel looks like and now we are going to start joining um, the upper part of the shoulders as you can see they are open but this side i had placed some stitch markers so I'll take them off and join the upper part of the sleeves. So before we join the upper part of the sleeves, I want to show you how to join this little part that wasn't joined on the back panel. You're going to just take this tail Get your darning needle and sew it onto the topmost chain of the chain three on this side. And then just weave in the tail. And that's it. At this point, we can remove the stitch markers that were marking the back panel as well. And then we are going to get a strand of yarn and join join from the side of the sleeve all the way inwards and we shall see how much space to leave we have our darning needle here and we are going to start from the corner okay so you're going to join stitch to stitch on both panels so that the upper part of the shoulder can be joined and then when it comes to the chains you're also going to go into them with one joining
so i joined until i had three groups of three double crochets to the corner here so i have all this opening here and i'm going to do the same actually let me just close it up up to only two spaces two groups of three double crochets because i feel like the opening is too big and i need to close it up so we have two groups of three double crochets to the corner here before we started the extensions for the front panel so this is what we have so we are going to do the same exact thing on the opposite side yeah we are going to fold over our work like this so that the sleeve is out and then we are going to join until we have two double crochet two groups of three double crochets to the corner so one two and then we are going to join from here all the way sideways all right after trying on the the shirt the openings were too big so i think we are going to have to close up until the corner of the hexagon before the extensions of the front and back panel so i'm going to close up until the corner of the hexagon okay so we only have the extension of the front and back panel that's the only part that we've left out so do the same on this side okay this is what we have and let's see how that works out on the body and we see how it closes up around the neck all right guys after experimenting with different fittings i decided to go for the closed up look so when you get to the corner of the hexagon once you join that part you are going to continue joining these rows that we did the extension rows and you're going to join row to row using a darning needle just like we were doing for this side so i'm just joining three stitches or three joinings into each and every row so that we can have a very secure join after this go into the next row and join the next row to the next so we are going to join all the extension rows doesn't matter how many rows that you did for the back panel and the front panel so i'm joining my very last row because i felt like this gave me the best fitting uh i experimented using stitch markers and it ended up giving me the best fitting for my shirt so for the last space i'm going to join two more times and this is what i'll have and then from here i'm going to go onto this other side and do the same exact thing from the hexagon just like that and then three times join three times into each and every row all the way to the middle section joining all the extension rows three times so that means the front panel is not going to leave any extension or any fold towards the front and i'll be leaving some images on the screen for you guys to see the different options you can go for any that suits you i even tried a button in the middle 
but I ended up removing it because um, I just felt like the plain t-shirt was better. And then these are the images of the open t-shirt with the front panel hanging. And then finally we have the images of um, the final shirt whereby we joined the front panel all the way to the end of the front panel without any rows hanging on the front panel and we just left this space that space i felt like this gave me the best fitting so after this the next thing that you're going to do is to weave in all your ends you're going to grab your darning needle and weave in all the tails that you have on your piece so let me st start with these ones that are in my way right now All right, guys, so we are done weaving in all our tails and you're going to make sure each and everything is secure enough. And this is what the final shirt looks like. And I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Make sure you give it a thumbs up if you did. And I will see you in my next tutorial. I don't know what that will be, but it will definitely be another beautiful piece. So thanks for watching. And don't forget to check out the written pattern on all my online shops. And yeah, I'll see you in my next one. Bye.